In this video, we are going to see the next machine learning algorithm that is logistic regression. So the, let's see the agenda for today. So we'll be exploring what logistic regression is, when it could be used and how it has to be implemented for a given data set. Before getting in deep into logistic regression, let's uh, recap uh, the basics of machine learning algorithms. Depending on the data set you have at your hand and depending on the presence of an output variable, we say we can decide whether the data set belongs to supervised or unsupervised. When there is an output column, okay, so what is an output? When that particular value depends on a statistical or a computation of the rest of the input columns, the other columns, we say it is a dependent variable. So when, when one such dependent variable exists on your data set, we say a day output variable exists. So if it is so, the data set comes under your supervised category. Again, you have two major classifications over there. One is regression, other one is prediction. When regression could be applied, Yes, the out, when the output column has continuous values, okay, so when you have values like 0 0.1, 5, 10, 12, and if it you, you couldn't uh, categorize into a discrete values or specific value, rather it falls into continuous values, we say regression is the concept we need to apply and that's called as your prediction. Okay. So on the other case, if your output value contains categorical values, what is categorical values? Specific discrete values, yes or no, true or false. A, B, C, level 5, level 2, level 3 sort of thing. We say uh, the, the output column has discrete values and hence that class of algorithm you need to apply is classification. Now let's uh, get in deep into logistic regression of you take a student who's writing his exam okay, in late uh, 1970s or 80s. Okay. How does his marks will be awarded? Having written a subject, how the marks will be awarded? Yes, of course, he'll be given a mark in the format of numbers, okay, 90, 95, any number ranging from 0 to 100 would be the mark earned by the student. But currently, this generation student who is giving her exam or his exam, how the marks are being awarded? Yeah, instead of marks, now we are given with grades, okay, yes, A grade, A grade, B grade and C. How the previous marks is being, anyway, be a, whether the student is in his 1970, or 2020, marks is the criteria with which his uh, understanding of a particular topic can be measured, right? So the scheme may differ. Earlier we have the mark scheme, now we have the gradings. So is there a difference that exists between these two? Yes, of course, right? So for every range, the grades are being mapped. For 90 to 100, you can map S grade. 80 to 89, you can map gray grade and so on. You can go deep into as many levels as you want. There exists a relation between this and this, okay? Only with that, your grades are being distributed, okay? And, okay? So I have a sample assessment criteria. So I'm telling the internal assessment is being formed using CAT1. CAT2, DA1, DA2 and DA3. I never bother about how much the student has scored in FAT. Rather, I am, we are going to store all the internal marks that is being stored by a student along with the total marks he earned after that. Okay, so what is left out here? The FAT. Okay, we don't know what is the FAT marks he scored. I know only how much he has scored as an internal assessment and what is his uh, uh, total at the end. If I want, I know how much the CAT1, CAT2, DA1, DA2, DA3 marks of a student. Can I predict how much uh, total he will get at the end? Yes, can you do? Yeah, since these are the input variables, okay, and this is your output variable. You can run a linear regression over this, okay, because uh, from the data set it is better understood that there exists a linearity between your input variables and your output variable because if there is an increase in internal assessment, it's obvious that the total mark will also increase, right, and hence there exists a correlation between your input variables and your output. A correlation exists and hence there exists a uh, linearity between the input variables and your output variable. So you can fit a regressor line and then you can predict how much should be the total mark. So what kind of algorithm that we will use here? Yes, it is linear regression, right? So what linear regression states when your data's input variable specifies, if there exists a linearity between your data set and your output column, that is your input columns and your output column, we say you can apply linear regression to predict the output okay now the same data set how is it being mapped now it is mapped to grades so for the same uh, input data set 
now the output column instead of marks that is continuous variables now it becomes a categorical label s a and so on okay so now what is the mapping that we have to do again the map like we are given with the input uh, um, data set having the internal marks so based on the internal marks now we are going to predict the probability of a student securing yes right so and given this we are going to uh, say whether the student can able to get s or not now the marks has to be predicted okay so if you look at the previous sheet you can see if 98 is the marks so based on that we are going to say whether uh, he'll be there in the uh, s category or not okay so what is the relation that we need to follow here is the probabilistic approach do you understand yeah now how to predict okay so for this we have seen this is predicted using regression and this is predicted using what is called as your classification okay now when to use this okay so under what situation you can use logistic regression all your independent variables are numeric what is your independent variable that is your input variable that should be numeric and that should that should be continuous okay most probably it needs to be continuous but if it is discrete okay you can apply that's not a major problem and what about the output variable so output variable has to be categorical that's a must to apply apply logistic regression otherwise it will get into linear regression con mostly binary um, categorical that is binary categories or binary class labels what is binary there are only two class labels yes or no true or false and so on ha can be computed using this approach Yes, you can also find out multi-class classification using softmax approach, but that is beyond uh, the learning of uh, this course. So the output variable needs to be probabilistic. What is probabilistic? Okay, so based on the value that you retrieve, you should be in a position to write a probability function to state. If it is above this value, you go this side. If it is below this value, you go this side. Okay, only if there exists a probabilistic nature, you can go for that. Okay. So and hence this is very uh, common. There should exist a linear relationship between uh, between the input and the a linear relationship between the input and the output variables. Now, so now what is logistic regression? We have seen when to use it. We have seen now how to use it. Assume you have got a graph of this kind. This graph is plotted between the GRE scores assure, scored by a student with the chance of admission to an international university. the output variables you can see it is categorical because it is lies it has only two values yes or no all the values are scattered around either yes or no so if you are given with a data set of this kind now there is a it's possibility to draw a regression line of this uh, like this which i have drawn in the middle which corresponds to the equation y is equal to mx plus c technique that is mathematically it will be written as m1 transpose into x1 why this transpose comes yeah now having an equation of this kind mathematically if you look at uh, if you have two vectors like this 1 2 followed by 3 4 which is actually the storage of the values of m and x if you want to perform multiplication between these two so the rows data has to be multiplied with the values among the column so either of the one has to be taken the transpose to obtain a format of this kind that's why we write m1 transpose so m1 transpose if you write the rows will be changed to to column and x1 will remain as it is now if you perform multiplication then 1 will be multiplied with 3 2 will be multiplied with 2 4 and it goes on okay so that is the meaning of having transpose over here nothing more than that it's simple now if you have more than one input variable equation will go like this m1 x1 so in which case so the all the um, okay m1 x m2 and so on up to m1 will be taken and a transpose of this will be obtained and you will have n cross 1 matrix so and your x either this m can be like this and x can be like this or a reverse is also possible so having done this you will arrive at an equation and you can predict the value of y how can you map it to the class label whether it is yes or no in your probability that is when you are obtained a value of greater than or equal to 0.5 you can say it falls into otherwise it is zero so if your class labels are categorized as 1 and 0 it will go as such if it is true and false 1 will be replaced by true and 0 will be replaced by false whether the transition is steep okay for any computed value if you say only yes or no so a graph will go like this right so you will have all s values and suddenly it will map and it will go like this okay so whether you will get transition of this kind for all 
it will be very difficult because your values may range like 0.3 0.4 0. So in that case what actually happens is you will get a smooth curve of this kind so and hence so this mapping function how to write this mapping function so instead of writing directly with a just if then else comparison in order to perform this kind of smooth transition between your s value and your no value s or no you can replace with one or zero or class level a class level b anything so now in order to cope up with this uh, kind of smooth nature having the s value at one end and the no value at other end that is the class label one at one end class label 